Peoria, what's good? We back. I told y'all we going to be back, man. Look, had to take a two-week hiatus real quick for season one. Had to get season two organized and situated. Today is the first day of season two. And believe you me, it's going to be lit because we got, look, I got a lineup for interviews for y'all for season two. Like a lineup. It's going to be like that. Trust me. So uh, without further ado, you already know how we do, man. Uh, Rap Politics is brought to you by Sherman's where they carry the best in furniture, mattresses, and appliances, and they also hire in. Sherman's is one of the few places left in town that doesn't care about your education. They just promote people that work hard, have a good attitude, and follow their core values. One of the few places where hard work gets you recognized and gets you ahead. You can log on to shermanscareers.com to check out the openings and apply online. And we're also brought to you by Terry Shepard, a real estate consultant whose values are rooted in customer care and service. She can help you negotiate your next deal and get you into a home that fits. She's with Remax Traders Unlimited, and she can be reached at 309-361-4592. And like I said, we back today. We got uh, the director of the PR Art Guild on, on deck, and she's going to talk about what we got going on this weekend um, with the art fair. So make sure y'all stay tuned for that. But real quick, so look, oh, we're also brought to you by, you already know, Sophisticated Ratchet, October 9th is going down. We got live canvas. We got live pottery. We got music. Fashion show brought to you by Lexi. So you already know how that go because she did the Juneteenth joint. Um, so just pull up. Y'all can get tickets right now on Eventbrite. So that's live right now. Um, so look, I was finna post this up and I didn't get a chance to grab it. I was finna go live last weekend, but everybody knows what was going on at Peoria Public School, uh, well, Central, you know what I mean? And I, I was I was finna post it, but I couldn't find the link that I was gonna use, and I was finna throw somebody else school up there because you know I didn't want to do central like that and, and be good. You know I, I can't do I'm a model, you know I can't do the lines like that. But uh, what happened was unfortunate, and I know that uh, the the district of uh, Pure Public Schools are chasing after it right now, trying to get down to the bottom of it. But the reason why I was gonna go live is this: is I saw a whole bunch of stuff on Facebook and just social media in general, like oh that's terrible, all oh, the district this, the district that. So my little two cents is, look, Barack Obama a long time ago was like, man, I could pass all the educational bills in the world, but at the end of the day, I can't walk inside your house and make your kid turn the TV off. Like, I can't do that. So at the end of the day, we're going to do what we can do, but what's going to be done is going to be primarily out of our hands. And so the people that know me, man, I used to work at Harrison School way back in the day, and it was... Uh, it was an experience because I got to work with a lot of a lot of youth and it just reminded me when I was like in third grade, second grade, first grade, you know what I'm saying, going to school, snot nosy, you know what I'm saying? And it was super dope. Um, but one of the things that I realized when I was down there was like I got to really see the inside workings of how school go. I got to see the inside workings of how, you know, districts collaborate and how principals running back and forth up and down the hallways and, and what all transpires. And what I realized was like, man, these kids really ain't the problem. You know, a lot of, you know, pure public schools gets a bad rap saying they got bad students or bad kids. But I realized like the parents ain't really the problem. And I really got some one on one interaction with parents. Now, the parents is like that, that's something totally different. And when I really got to get the get to see the insides on that and not only that, talk to other teachers that work within public schools whether it be here in Peoria or elsewhere, I've heard different stories where, you know, a student to say something way out of line to a parent. And so following protocol, a parent would go pull up and uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll say something out of line to a teacher. A student would say something out of line to a teacher, right? And the teacher would follow protocol and follow up with the parent. What well, the, the the teacher end up getting cussed out by the parent. And that be and that really be the problem. And it be a lot of people that's complaining about the district that ain't hands on, don't know about in a single parent teacher conference, don't know how their kid doing, don't know what classes they in, don't know if they went. You know what I mean? And that's that's why I didn't post it up with the school because it's not a central problem. It's not a D one fifty or pure public schools problem. It's not even a government problem at the end of the day. It's a parenting situation from the beginning. You know what I mean? And then from there, we can figure out how we can mold some stuff together. But if anybody thinks that any district is a problem with kids, a, a, a district can't control uh, a student swinging on the next student in the classroom no more than the mayor can make somebody not swing on somebody at the liquor store. 
You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, we all got to come together as a, as a community, whether you got kids in District 150 or not, Pure Public School is the official name, but whether you got kids there or not, you know, mentorship is, a, is an option. You know, reaching out to these youth, whether they in, you know, public school or private school, that's an option. You know what I mean? And just making sure that we as a community taking uh, responsibility and accountability for what goes on around here, because at the end of the day, again, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a district problem. And if you feel like it's the district's responsibility to be the end all and be all for any student, then you might have dropped the ball already. That's just that's just how I feel about that. That's just what it is. Also, so look, we didn't talk about Donda or CLB because we was in between season one and season two. And look, all I'm saying is I'm not look, I'm not here to say that Donda is better than CLB. I'm just here to say that I listen to Donda more than I listen to CLB. Now, CLB, CLB is that. CLB decent. I ain't really, I ain't gonna cap. I ain't got through the whole thing. I mean, that might be part of the problem. Because every time I hear new Drake, I go back and listen to old Drake because the new Drake don't really, it don't really hit like you need it to hit. You know what I mean? Kanye, on the other, on the other hand, we got the pure art guild director here. We talking about art. We talking about, yay, we talking about art. You right? And I think it really separated the people that appreciate rap versus the people that appreciate art. And look, between them two, I know Kanye and Drake got their beef back and forth, but we can't sit here and, and act like just because CLB dropped that Donda is trash. We can't act like just because Drake is taking over the charts that Kanye is trash. We can't sit here and act like just because Drake is doing Drake that he in any way, shape, or form is on a superior production level than Ye. Celebrate CLB. Have fun with it. You know what I'm saying? Knife talking, all that. Hey, look, Project Pat feature prices just went up. You know what I mean? But at the end of the day, let's just not act like Kanye ain't that no more. That's all I'm saying. Let's just not act like Kanye is not that. And I'm going to leave it at that. So now, look, we have feature interview for tonight, and she is doing a wonderful job in the Pure area, keeping the arts in the mainstream, in the forefront of the community, making sure that people have not only an opportunity to buy art, but people have an opportunity to sell art at the same time. She's the president of the Pure Art Guild. Shannon Cox is on Rap Politics tonight. Shannon was good. Hey, how are you? What's up? How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you coming on Rap Politics. Oh, I know. I know. Appreciate you coming on Rap Politics and discuss not only the Art Guild, but the Fine Art Fair that's going on this weekend. Um, but I want to start from the beginning. What is the PR Art Guild for the people that don't know? And how did you become to be a part of it? Well, the Peoria Art Guild is a non-for-profit organization in Peoria that actually started in 1878 um, by a group of people who wanted to bring arts to the community. Um, and it has been around for 142 years, uh, became the, Peori the name the Peoria Art Guild in 1969. Um, so our mission is to bring art to the community and to bring the community to art. And so that's what we work for every day um, through education initiatives. Um, we have a community arts program where we are able to go out into the community and serve those that maybe can't get to our facility. Um, we have um, scholarships available for our art education classes. Um, we do exhibitions every month and um, open them up with the first Friday and have an art reception. Um, and they are really great. We actually just had an artist from um, Uruguay visit us, um, flew in from Uruguay and ha had an exhibition with us um, last month. Um, our current artist is from Champagne, And next month, our artist, um, Randy Carlson, is a Peoria Bradley professor who does some amazing pot pottery. So we always open those up on First Friday. We have an open house. Everybody's welcome. Come in, meet the artist, uh, meet the art supporters, and just hang out. Um, so that, that's a little bit about what we do. And how did you become a part and even president of the, uh, of the Art Guild? I'm actually the executive director, um, executive director, so that's okay. I serve under a board of directors, um, but I am the executive director. And I started in 2018. Um, I had an art center in another community, and um, I was approached by the Art Guild to see if I would like to plan the Fine Art Fair 
Um, and um, it was a little bit of a, a scary endeavor because it's a huge event. Um, and so um, along with uh, Kim Sanders, who is was the co-director with me, um, we took on the Fine Art Fair in 2018. And in the fall of 2018, they hired me as the executive director director to um, to run the organization. And I've been cool. there since. And so what, what kind of art do you do? You actually do art or do you direct art? I am more of a art supporter and okay. uh, an, a, um, a director. <laughs> I actually uh, am a photographer um, and have done some photography in the past. Um, and I, so I have a little bit of a, a creative gene in me, but um, mostly I like to support the artist and make sure that they have all the needs that, you know, all their needs met. So that's kind of my, my art. Okay, cool. So talk about the, the Fine Art Fair. It's going on this weekend, uh, Riverfront. We've got, I've seen billboards up for it. Uh, what can people anticipate? And what's going, what, what is that about? And who, what, what can people anticipate? Well, this is our 59th year to hold the art fair. So um, it is held on the Peoria Riverfront. It's this Saturday, September 25th and 26th, Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday 10 to 4. Um, it's a juried art show. Uh, so we have artists that apply from all over the United States and sometimes even from other countries. And then they're juried by a panel and select we select the best artists to invite. And, and for then, the people that don't know, what is juried? What does it mean to be juried? Um, they look at the quality of the art, the um, the um, quality of their tent. Um, they have to send a booth shot. It's all about aesthetics um, when they set up at the fair. So we pick the best artist. Um, and we use um, artists and um, and professors from Bradley and 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 people who really really know what good art is, and they judge it, and then we average the scores and pick our best. So you can't just apply to be, or just sign up to be, or pay to be in the Pure Art Fair in the Fine Art Fair. You have to be selected and judged right. and let in. Correct. Yes. Um, and that's, um, we do give um, other, the Art Guild does give other um, options for people to be able to show their work. But for the fine art fair, yes, it is a juried show. So you have to be selected. Yes. Okay, cool. And and what does this mean for not only the Pure Art Guild, but for the city of Pure to have artists from all over the country coming in and not only selling their art, but buying our food, visiting our yeah. malls, staying in our hotels? In 2019, um, according to um, the figures that the Visitors Bureau helped us put together, we had about a $200,000 economic impact on our city when we had the fair. Um, we usually have about eight to 10,000 visitors and 50% of them come from outside of uh, the area. So we figured about 350 hotel stays um, there was about $55,000 spent on uh, meals at local restaurants and $38,000 on other local spending. Um, and then I think somewhere around nine or $10,000 in taxes generated from the fair. So it's very important. Uh, it's a very important time for our restaurants and, and um, stores and gas stations and hotels um, when all of these people come into the community for this festival. Awesome. Awesome. And also, so for the people that might be listening that are into art and we've seen a lot of art go on, um, be put up downtown and people are posting stuff on IG and things like that. How does somebody be a part of this show from an artist standpoint? From an artist standpoint? Well, if the, if they want to um, to apply for the fair in January, we put out a call on Zap. And that is an application process for artists. Um, if you uh, follow the Peoria Art Guild, uh, their Facebook or get onto their newsletter, you'll get those notifications. Um, and it's an artist application, people apply, um, and then they can get into the, to the process of being selected. But also there's also, many other opportunities to be at the fair. We we offer offer local organizations to set up at the fair. We have volunteer opportunities. We have entertainment, um, live performance on SEFQ stage throughout the whole weekend, and even buskers um, that will roam the fair and do really fun, cool, little acoustic things and um, ma magic um, and stuff like that. So um, there's lots of opportunity. 
And you also, we were speaking off air um, about being able to be the spotlight artist that does the poster art. Um, yeah. You have billboards up all over. I've seen them as I drive by. But that's not just internal work. That's done by artists on the outside that actually get selected to do that. Correct. So every year we, uh, after we select our pool of artists and we invite them, then we start looking through the art that's submitted to find a, a great poster uh uh, marketing artist. And um, it's it's really a, an honor for those artists because they are really highlighted and they end up, you know, selling more work because of all the advertisement. Um, and we've had some really great uh, people who collect the Peoria Art Guild posters from the fine art fairs. I mean, we have them back until the 80s, I think, is when they started printing them. And our sponsors always get them. But um, this year, we have we have an emerging artist that we invite every year. And we also selected her art as our, our marketing and poster art. And her name is Hattie Lee. Um, she is a Peoria artist who just graduated with her master's from Bradley. And she, uh, so that bright, colorful work, which is perfect for this year after, you know, the hard years we've been through here lately. Um, that is her art that is on all of the marketing, on the billboards. You'll see it on the community mural um, that we do at the fair. Um, so that, that work is all hers. And then we also have three guest artists that we invite. Um, and so those are our local artists that the Art Guild recognizes as guests. So we always have an emerging artist and a couple guests. And this year we have three. Um, Orion Ritchie is a local sculpture. Jeremy Berkeley is a printmaker and Jeremy Draper from J Draper Glass. Um, they, those are our three guest artists and those artists we do invite um, and provide a tent for them and give them uh, the opportunity to show. So that's another way we can support local artists. And what, uh, for, for people that want to be a part of it, are you guys still taking volunteers? Um, yes, uh, we were pretty full, but we've had a couple of people that have um, uh, had to cancel and thankfully they let us know about that. So we do have some openings. There is uh, a volunteer link on our website. If somebody does want to volunteer, um, that is an option. So we do have some spaces. Yeah. And how do people join the Art Guild? So on our website, um, if you want to become a member, there is a membership tab that you can check out. Um, membership starts as low as $40 for our artist members. And then we have uh, $50 on up. Um, each artist, you know, there's lots of perks. You get uh, discounts to classes and everybody gets free art fair tickets if they're a member. So um, that's a pretty cool, you know, opportunity right there. Um, but you can find it all on our website at art, PeoriaArtGuild.org. Okay, this weekend. And before we head off to the lightning round, you are hosting or you're teaching, directing a messy paint pour um, at the Sophisticated Ratchet Art Show uh, this, well, next month, October 9th. Talk about that, how people get signed up. What does that look like? What it what, what can people anticipate? Yeah, for so we're really excited to be a part of that event. Um, and yours truly is going to uh, take on that art class and do it. I've done a few of those and they're really fun. Um, I'll have some helpers with me, but it's a messy paint pour. So it's a very fluid painting. Um, everybody will be able to take that home. They can sign up for it on our website under our art education classes. Um, and um, then just show up that evening. And I think you're going to have some spots open to pay at the door, but it would be nice um, just if you want to reserve your spot to get that um, uh, secured on our website. Certainly, certainly. Okay, so now we're going to head over to the lightning round. I and can it's going to be... More thing? Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, sure. We didn't talk about getting into the fair. So um, we are doing something different this year that we haven't done before. And I want people to be aware of it. We are having pre-sale tickets. Um, so tickets are available on our website. You can grab them right off our main page or on the fine art fair page, but they are $6 pre-sale. Um, we're trying to promote contactless entry. Um, so that they can just be scanned and come in um, if you buy them at the door. So pre-sale $6. If you buy them at the door, they're eight. Um, so we just wanted to make sure everybody knows that's a little different this year. And what is <laughs> any, no, you're fine. any COVID mitigations that people need to be aware of? Um, we are going to have hand sanitation uh, stations throughout the fair. We are asking everybody to be mindful of personal space. 
Um, you can wear a mask and that's more than that's welcome. If you're um, have your um, shots and you do do not want to mask, that's fine too. We just ask everybody to just be mindful. If there's a crowd of people, just step away, maybe go to another area. Um, it's an outdoor event, so we think it can be well controlled. Awesome, awesome. Anything else that uh, we might not have uh, covered for the final um, for this? Let's see. Um, I just think it's really important that people could know about the Kids Art Fest. The Kids Art Fest is a part of the fair, and we have several stations where kids can create art. Um, and we also promote the I buy art initiative. So anybody that buys a piece of art will be able to get a button and they have, we've had them since 2018 when I started and they become collectible and it's just a little button. The artist gives you that says I buy art and it's just a, it's really, uh, another way for us to support. That's how these artists make a living. So, um, that's kind of a fun initiative. Um, it's, it's going to be a great event. We're really excited. Now for the for the for the kids art is that a certain is that Saturday and Sunday is that a certain time how does that work for parents that might want to bring their kids out there It's the same times as the fair um, there is an entry fee of six dollars for the kids to get in, but they'll be able to do several activities. And Illinois State University is also going to be there doing some STEAM activities. Um, so it's a really really great um, a time for the kids. They enjoy it. Okay, cool, cool. Anything else before we uh, and how do people get a hold of you? And um, you can get a hold of me through our webpage. If you um, email, you know, at the bottom, I'll say send us a message, but also um, you can email me at director at peoriaartguild.org um, or call the office and um, we can return your call. But everything's on our website at peoriaartguild.org. Got it. We got that down. <laughs> Are you ready for the lightning round? Sure. Okay, so like we mentioned off air, rapid fire questions, rapid fire answers, and we're gonna see how much we can get through. Let me turn my sound up real quick. Uh, and we're gonna put 150 in the clock. Are you ready? I'm ready. Boom, okay. Favorite color? Green. Okay, what music do you listen to the most? Um, I love Van Morrison. Uh, um, Mountain View or Ocean View? Mountain View. Do you like chicken with drums or flats? Uh, drums. Favorite artist? Oh, I have several. I can't tell you that. There's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love my artists, all of them. <laughs> Preference uh, for the house, sculpture or canvas, canvas paint? Sculpture. Favorite museum? Um, I love our Peoria Riverfront Museum. Yeah, it's easy out. Okay, okay. I see what you was there. I see what you was there. <laughs> Apple or Android? Apple. Apple or oranges? Ooh, oranges. Favorite movie? Oh, my favorite all-time movie is National Lampoon's Vacation. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, vacation was good. Vacation was yeah. good. Uh, if you can, um, your, your favorite piece of art you've ever purchased, what is it? Actually, I have several, but I just this week purchased a sculpture from Orion Ritchie, or one of our guest artists for my back deck, and it's pretty awesome. So it's on my favorite list right now. Food that you hate the most? Oh, um, probably. That's hard. Liver? <laughs> liver and onions? Oh, I mean, who oh. does like that? I don't know. <laughs> I've never seen it before, but I want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. Michael Jackson or Prince? Prince. Um, and uh, toaster or microwave oven? Toaster. Toaster. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> oh, I, I, I forgot the main one. Do grits take salt or sugar? Salt. I got to get you off. It's been great. It's been great. <laughs> Right. It's great. No, no, seriously. Thank you. Uh, Executive Director of the Pure Art Guild, Shannon Cox. Thank you for coming on. It is the Fine Art Fair going on this Saturday and Sunday, uh, Saturday 10 to 5, Sunday 10 to 4. Yes. At the riverfront, uh, show up, show out, buy art, support artists in the area. Uh, thank you so much, Shannon Cox, for coming on to Rap Politics. Thanks for having me. That was Shannon Cox, y'all. Uh, Look, fight our fair dope. Like I've been like a couple times in a row. Like 
it like we got some dope art and dope art events going on in Peoria in general. So make sure y'all pop out for that. And of course, next month, Sophisticated Ratchet, October 9th at Lofty. Make sure y'all pop out for that as well. Um, and of course, we're brought to you by Sherman's, where they carry the best in furniture, mattresses, and appliances. And they also looking for people to come and work. Come get that bread. PPP ain't going to last forever. And it's one of the few places that hard work gets recognized and gets you ahead. You can log on to shermanscareers.com to check out the openings and apply online. And we're also brought to you by Terry Shepard, a real estate consultant whose values are rooted in customer care and service. She can help you negotiate your next deal and get you into a home that fits. She's with Remax Traders Unlimited, and she can be reached at 361 45 92 and this is season two of rap politics look i'm about to just post y'all the rest of the season that we got interviews lined up i mean we got we got some hitters we got some hitters so make sure y'all uh stay tuned for that as well in the meantime appreciate y'all tuning in in my guest studio you know what i mean usually i see malcolm x and martin luther king jay-z in the background we switched it up uh because i'm in between studios so y'all gonna see where the final spot is for the rap politics but in the meantime y'all check out the next episode this coming thursday 7 p.m journal star live peace